So we are in now, I give you a little overview of synthesis of peptide libraries and arrays. In especially interesting is of course the protein function, which is behind and my main interest as Deirdre mentioned already is the screening of proteins. And I have here some focus on application out of the literature. And of course, I would like to show you the equipment as well we are using to synthesize peptide libraries on cellulose membranes, as well as on little slides. Characterization of protein-protein interaction is of course crucial for understanding the cell functionality. Using peptide arrays and libraries, it is possible to map the precise binding sites in such complexes. And peptide array libraries usually contain partially overlapping peptides derived from the sequence of one protein from the complex of interest. These are my major statements generally for the library and I would like to draw your attention to the group in Israel, which has a nice comparison on um, peptide on slides, peptide libraries and arrays on slides and on membranes. Of course, peptides, we know all these are a unique class of drugs and occupy a distinct pharmaceutical space between small molecule drugs and biological classes of drugs. The focus of the pharmaceutical drug discovery has shifted in the last decades towards biologics to develop vaccines for a variety of infection diseases and cancer and more and more peptide-based drugs reaching active clinical development and are approved by FDA. I give you short numbers here. Over 80 peptide drugs have been approved in the United States, Europe, and Japan. Over 150 are in active clinical development. More than 400 to 600 are in clinical and preclinical trials. And even if the peptides are maybe just 5% of the drug market, more and more pharmaceutical companies get more and more interested in peptides because of their high specificity and low toxicity. Peptide synthesis on membranes is done on the very mild FMOC solid phase peptide chemistry. We work with activated amino acid and different building blocks. We do generally a double coupling step. We have a capping there, deprotection. We, do the, we fulfill the round until the peptides are completely assembled on the membrane. The final is on the side chain deprotection and we have a peptide array on a cellulose membrane for further testing. Proteome interaction can be of course finalized by screening with overlapping peptides. We have also truncation libraries for fine mapping. We can do a positional scanning where we exchange different amino acid or different building blocks. And of course, we like of modifications and use natural and unnatural amino acids. Application for peptide synthesis are generally of course, epitope mapping, the binding of an antibody to an antigen. Nucleic acid interaction, we have protein binding sites, we have phosphorylation sites, which can be accessed and we have enzyme specificity. So there is a lot of application for peptides and they work as a tool in the lab. The appealing part of these slides are of course that we can prepare identical arrays and identical copies for antibody binding sites, for immunodominant epitopes, for phosphorylation sites can, that can be used, kinase substrates, domain binding sites and antibody specificity. As I said, the part again, to compare to the standard membrane is of course from one synthesis, we can generate numerous identical copies. 
with these slides, we have a much smaller sample volume. We have again also various detection methods. It's a very simple handling of the peptide arrays on the glass slides as well as on the membrane. But here we can especially look for low affinity binders or low non-specific protein binding. The cellulose spots is unique because we are synthesizing on a cellulose disc. They are in an array of 384 format. We do the standard FMOC synthesis on a multiPEP1 or multiPEP2 from CEM. We do the workup and the dissolving of the disc to get the peptide cellulose conjugates. These are spotted by using a slide spotting robot onto glass slides, coated glass slides. And we can have these and later for incubation with sera, kinases, proteins, cell lines, or antibodies. And from one synthesis out of the machine, we can generate up to 500 copies of the glass slides. Peptide array incubation is very similar on the protocol to Western blots. So from the synthesized array of peptides, we can do the incubation with a first antibody binding to the antigen. We have a second antibody for the detection. We have different ways of detection like colorimetric substrates, chemiluminous sense, audio radiography. On the fluorescence, we are a little bit limited because of the white background of the cellulose. We are generally working in the range of 650 to 800 nanometers. Epitope mapping is a very essential tool and part to understand and develop therapeutic antibodies. And I will give you my textbook example for this one. Um, to map the epitope of a monoclonal antibody, they have used an array of overlapping peptides, 15 mers, with a frame shift of three, uh, covering the whole range of TAP1 and TAP2. And the astonishing part was when you look at the schematics from TAP1 and TAP2, only on the C-terminal part of TAP1, we found the activity by a 15 mer peptide. Determination of the minimal epitope of the monoclonal antibody, the immunoactive 15 mer peptide corresponding to the C-terminus of TAP1 was further dissected by alanine scanning, C and N-terminal truncation. And this scans are revealing the importance of the side chain groups of aspartic and glutamic acid. And here you see that the activity is gone if these are replaced by an alanine walk. Furthermore, the C-terminal truncation shows how important the glutamic acid is and the N-terminal truncation gives you the indication of a pentamere, which is the binding site to the antibody. So TAP can be inhibited by antibodies that specifically recognize the discrete linear epitope of the very last five C-terminal amino acid from the residue of TAP1. This is quite an interesting uh, result. And if you think about the number of peptides which have been synthesized, then you must see that the screening process using cellulose membranes or the cellulose disc or the small amount in on resin is much more economic than using a standard large scale synthesizer. I have more examples for you. Corona. In 2004, there was a group in Canada working on uh, Corona on SARS and MERS and they were synthesizing a set of peptides to stimulate the human immune system to uh, design and produce antibodies to prevent infection from SARS. And they were synthesizing on a cellulose membrane 4,942 10 amino acids 
peptides, which included all of the sequences predicted for the SARS coronavirus. They were probing these membranes with four pairs of acute convalescent sera from recovered SARS cases. And the result is quite astonishing. They found that convalescent sera with high neutralizing activity recognized exclusively only a limited number of peptides on the membrane. The immune diagnostic is another important part, especially when it, go, when it goes into food allergens. Um, here we have a study of uh, Borrelia. This is a predominant cause of Lyme diseases in the US and Europe. Estimated infection in Germany is 60,000 to 100,000 per year. And again, serum incubation, a large number of serum incubation from different patients and computer analysis reveals the binding sites to these arrays. The identification of B cell epitopes of food allergens can lead to novel diagnostics and tools for therapeutic reagents for food allergy. Here we have, I can show you from a group in Germany immunodetection of 145 overlapping synthetic peptides using a serum pool of six non-allergic and serum from peanut and soybean allergic patients. Gives you nice results here on the, on the membrane. The comparison and the next step for this group was to move from the membrane where you need a large volume for the assay back to the peptide microarrays where you can live with lower volumes than 100 microliters. And this shows clearly that peptide microarrays is simple and cost-effective screening for potential B cell epitopes or food allergens. Another interesting part is, of course, binder characterization and optimization. Again, we do the epitope mapping, overlapping peptides. We do substitution analysis of the individual peptides and screening, and we can easily find stronger and weaker binder. The unique ability of antibodies to bind with high affinity to diverse antigen makes them attractive for medical and scientific research. So here we have a binding site and by the substitution of each position on the peptide with all the 20 natural occurring amino acids, we get different binding stronger and weaker binders. So this is very important if you need a rational engineering of antibodies with uh, good affinity to the specific requirements. Phosphorylation can be easily studied also uh, to study kinase substrates and kinase inhibitors. This is nicely shown in here an array of uh, peptide libraries on cellulose paper have been screened by using autophosphorylated GMP dependent protein and you find the high binding and affinity for CGPK. The stone peptide arrays are a valuable tool that can be used to screen antibodies, protein, and enzymes for interaction with histones and their post-translational modification. So this one shows you the binding of histone methyl transferase to a set of 384 different peptides on a cellulose membrane. And you can have these, of course, on the cellulospot discs as well. Another interesting part have been the spot synthesis of PNA arrays. Uh, the PNA method on the spot exhibit the Watson-Crick base pairing rule with high duplex stability. 
And PNA spot synthesis is a very economical and handy procedure for screening of large numbers of DNA sequences. My last example is also a set of peptide microarrays where we have different building blocks used uh, to get the histone uh, binding affinity in microarrays. And using this set, we can also do the fine mapping of this binding affinity by a sequence shift or the now known N and C terminal truncation. So this can be fairly easy done uh, in a very economical way on our spot synthesis method. Okay, last but not least, I will give you a short overview on the instrumentation. So my main focus inside the talk have been the cell of spot and spot synthesis on our machines. But of course, when we started the development of the uh, spot synthesis, we were also thinking after finding the needle in the high stack, you need to refine your experiments and then you need, of course, peptides, cleavable peptides so that you can do more and different assays and, of course, a chemical evaluation. So we have a column module here on the side as well to be able to synthesize peptides on resin in a micromole to millimole scale. Micromole scale is shown here. We can do the 96 well plate synthesis or micro columns 48 or 24 at a time with one to five micromole or the even slightly larger uh, system with five to 15 micromole. Counting here is generally a tentagel resin with a 0.2 millimole substitution. The same we have on the uh, larger synthesizer, the MultiPEP2. Also here we have a 72 column large scale uh, module or the 48 column module. So we can go up to 300 uh, micromole synthesis scale on this machines. We have micro scale synthesis and spot synthesis. I'm not sure if I have time enough, but I will give you a little overview on the X, Y, and Z pipetting robot. We have a motor-driven syringe to do the pre precise uh, stoichiometric um, uh, mixing of the building blocks together with activation. We have a ceramic solvent pump to do the washings using a multi-needle or a manifold here. We have ports for reagents, larger volume reagents. We have the, the exchangeable synthesis modules here. So this is now the 48 column module, which can be exchanged against the plate, the 96 well plate synthesis or the spot synthesis. Back to our array synthesis, this gives you the 384 frame for the cellulose discs. Here is the full membrane on, on the spot module. And of course, you need for the cellulose, um, for the cellulose spot module, you would need a slide spotting robot to prepare the copies of the individual synthesized array. Oops. Uh, some publication, so don't hesitate to contact me if you need more references. To my knowledge, we have more than six, 700 references from the last uh, 20 years concerning peptide libraries on membranes and cellulose spots. So this, so we have uh, there a larger library and can you support you with different applications if you need. And now I would like to thank you for your patience and your attention. Thank you.